What you're about to see is a real-life story, taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock, Captain Braddock, ready. The case I'm going to tell you about is an unusual one, but the ingredients have an old and familiar quality. Take one part impatience, two parts of something for nothing, a liberal dash of greed, mix well, and you come up with a very dangerous brew. The case began when young Andy Corliss came into my office with a rather startling statement. Well, I know this is going to sound peculiar to you, Captain Braddock, but I'm convinced someone is trying to kill me. Well, this is the racket detail. Are you sure you don't want homicide? Well, that's exactly what I don't want, especially my own. Now, I've already talked to the people over at Homicide, and they said at this point you were the man to handle the case. Yes, I have their report. Now, what's your story? Well, it all started about three months ago in my apartment uptown. Oh, oh making your own deliveries now, Max? I'm making this one, Mr. Corliss. Oh, yeah? Special occasion? Yes, sir, Mr. Corliss. I want to talk to you about your bill. Oh, oh, not this morning, Max. I'm not feeling very well. I'm not feeling well either. You're into me for over 300 bucks. $317.65 to mention the exact amount. And you don't think I'm good for it? Yeah, I think you're good for it if I live long enough. Well, on my 30th birthday... Yeah, I know. On your 30th birthday, you get an inheritance from your grandfather of $3 million. I also happen to know that you're 24 years old now, which means you don't get your inheritance for another six years. $3 million is a lot of money, Max. Yeah, and but... in six years, I could be very grateful. Yeah, but besides, it's a very good way of saving money for your old age. I'm no banker, Mr. Corliss. Look, all I know is you owe me $317.65, and I got bills to pay. And if I don't pay them, I'm out of business. Sorry, Max. No God. Any suggestions? No. Yeah. Yeah, you ever see the want ads or the personal columns in the newspaper? No, I can't say that I have. Well, I have. And I've seen where people advertise that you can borrow money on your inheritance. Well, the bank wouldn't lend me anything on it. Look, Mr. Corliss, I'm not a banker. I don't know anything about these ads. All I'm telling you is what I've seen in the newspapers. Uh, all right, Max. All right. I'll, I'll look into it. And if anyone will lend me any money on my inheritance, you'll be the first man to get paid. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And, uh, Mr. Corliss, I'll give you just one week to pay it, and then I turn it over to my lawyer. I'll see what I can do, Max. And don't slam the door. Uh, here's another one. Heirs, immediate cash advanced against your inheritance, trust fund, or life rights. Full particulars without fee. Suite 341 Sesame Building. Uh, the original of this will has been properly recorded, I presume? Oh, yes. It's all a matter of record. And the executives have determined that I won't collect a penny of the money until my 30th birthday. Three million dollars when I'm 30 and I can't even pay my tailor bill today. Mm -hmm. I see. And who directed you to me, Mr. Uh, Corliss? Well, nobody. I was just going down the line. Now, most of these other people want about 12% interest. How much do you charge? Uh, would you consider 7% exorbitant? Well, that's high enough. But as they so often say, beggars can't be choosers. How much money did you want to borrow? thousand dollars a week. That's a very large sum of money, Mr. Corliss. Well, not against a collateral of three million dollars. True. Hmm. I think maybe I can help you out of your difficulty, Mr. Corliss. If you'll just return at three o'clock, I'll have the necessary papers ready for your signature. Three o'clock. Did you take a lawyer with you to examine the papers you signed? Well, no, but the papers were all right. It was merely an assignment of rights in my inheritance to Jordan, subject to the amount of the loan. Yes, but the amount of the loan changes constantly. Well, yes, I know, but there were blank spaces in the contract to be filled in at the maturity of the loan. Blank spaces, eh? Go on. Well, you're not the only one that thinks I'm a fool. About a month later, I had a date with my girl, Sandy Matthews. I don't care if you're only paying 1% interest on your loan, Andy. It's an underhanded thing to do. Underhanded? Your grandfather had a purpose in keeping that money from you for another six years. Sure, he had a purpose. He wanted me to go to work. A fate worse than death? Well, as far as I'm concerned. 
Look, honey, I'm lazy. I've always been lazy, and I expect to be lazy. Andy, haven't you any ambition at all? Sure. I want to marry you, raise a whole bunch of ambitious children, and teach them to work. <laughs> no, all kidding aside, honey. We're young. We're only young once. You know, most people spend the best part of their lives working, and then they get too old to enjoy life. I don't want to make that mistake. Old Omar Khayyam said, Come, fill the cup, and in the fire of spring, your winter garment of repentance flame. The bird of time is but a little way to flutter, and lo, the bird is on the wing. No, thanks. I'm not marrying any birds this season. You sure? I'm sure. Hey, 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 smile when you say that. I'm not smiling, Andy. I think you better take me home. Well, okay. I think so. Well, that was a close call. Yeah, it's too close. Somebody forgot to tighten those wheel lugs. It's a good thing you didn't swerve in front of somebody that had slow reflexes. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, uh, here's a hundred dollars for your fast reflexes. Uh, keep it, but there's no charge for my reflexes. Okay. Oh, would you mind stopping at the nearest telephone and sending a cab back and a tow car? Huh? Uh, that'll be a 40 cent toll call. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Take it easy. Well, how do you like that? A person who doesn't want something for nothing. I like it. Now listen, Bruno, someone's responsible. Someone left the lugs loose on that wheel, and you're the only person that services my car. Well, not me, Mr. Corners. <laughs> I wouldn't do such a thing. That could be dangerous. And probably the understatement of the year. Well, then if you didn't, who did? Well, you're talking like you think maybe I know. Maybe you do. Look, Mr. Corliss, maybe you better keep your car someplace else. Oh, now, just a minute. Look, I don't want any trouble. I don't like trouble. If you think I did something, call a cop. And prove I did something. Of course, I couldn't prove anything, so I moved my car to another garage. Well, did you report the incident to the police? Well, no, there didn't seem to be any point in it at the time. Did you mention it to anyone else? Only to Mr. Jordan, the man I arranged the loan with. He took it very big. Have you any enemies? Is there anybody who would profit by your, uh, your, uh... No. Well, that is, uh, unless it could be you. My dear boy, this is not a joking matter. If anything happens to you, I lose a client and an account. Of course, the money would be repaid me, plus interest. But that's all. You surely have read the contract. Well, certainly I read the contract. I don't know. I haven't got any enemies. Well, perhaps it was just an accident. Or maybe you insulted the garage man without realizing it, and he did it to get even. One never knows. People are strange. But don't worry, Mr. Corliss. We'll get at the bottom of this. How? Are you going to be at home this evening? Yes. I'm going to send a young man around to see you, a very clever young man. A detective? Oh, much more than a detective. He's a, an investigator. He's worked for me before, so you can absolutely depend upon his discretion and his ability. Okay. What's this Hawkshaw's name? O'Brien. Jerry O'Brien. Is 8 o'clock all right? No, you better make it about 9. 9. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you know as much about it as I do. A little more than you do, Mr. Corliss. I took the liberty of checking on the garage man before I came up. Oh? Well, you don't think he'd loosen those lugs on purpose, do you? I had no trouble getting his opinion of you. You're a rich man, a millionaire. He considers this ample reason for hating you. He just doesn't like rich men. Ah, oh, the guy must be crazy. Yeah, but not crazy enough to make it stick in court. But don't worry. We'll keep a couple of jumps ahead of him. Any gas outlets in the bedroom? No, just the kitchen and the fireplace. Why? Just routine. Where's the fire escape? Oh, down at the end of the entrance hall. There's no fire escape leading into the apartment. Kitchen? Yeah, kitchenette. Do you always keep that service door locked? Most of the time. Well, I think you're as safe here as you'd be anywhere, Mr. Corliss. You can reach me through Mr. Jordan if you ever need me. Yeah, well, just as a matter of curiosity, 
How much is your fee going to be for this uh, investigation? There'll be no charge, Mr. Corliss. Mr. Jordan's a friend of mine. Oh, I see. But you have spent some time. Think nothing of it. Well, good night. Good night. Well, they say one of the first symptoms of going crazy is to suspect everyone else of being crazy. I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. A lot of little things, little things that just didn't add up. Thanks. Anything else happen that just didn't add up? Mm -hmm. Not for about two months. I got my check from Jordan every week and saw Sandy three or four times a week. You know, dinner, shows, dancing. Then about four days ago, yeah, yeah, Friday night it was, I came down with a cold. You see, we were going on a picnic over to Corliss Island. Oh, that's where my grandfather's old summer house is. Yes, I know the place. Well, the house has been closed for years, but it's a nice place to have a day's outing. Now, I've got this cabin cruiser we go over in, but, well, this cold hit me Friday night. I don't know, Sandy, it's pretty bad cold, but maybe I'll be able to lick it. No, I went down the yacht harbor today and gassed up the boat, put ice and food aboard and everything, so I'll probably make it. Oh, yeah, I got a sure cure for a cold. Take a good stiff drink and then go to sleep. Well, we'll see, honey. I'll call you in the morning, huh, sweet? Night. Mr. Corliss! Mr. Corliss! Mr. Corliss! Mr. Corliss! Get me the police. An emergency. Hello. Send an ambulance and a pole motor. Belmont Arms, 920 Valley Vista Boulevard. Yes, apartment 8B. This is the superintendent, Mallory. J.C. Mallory. I received a telephone call from Mr. Corliss Yacht Club. They'd been unable to reach him on the phone, so they called me. You see, there'd been an accident at the club. A man, one of the club employees, had started to move Mr. Corliss Yacht from the dock and it blew up. The man was killed. They asked me to inform Mr. Corliss. The girl on the switchboard said he'd not gone out, so I went up to investigate. And when I opened the apartment, I found it was filled with gas. Windows were all closed. Jet was on in the fireplace. And uh, the jets were on in the kitchen stove. And the pilot light was turned off. So it couldn't have been an accident. Well, they put me out with the pull motors and I'm pretty healthy. Now, whether this case should be handled by the homicide department or your racket squad, I don't know. I think it belongs to my department. It's a bit unusual for a confidence man to go in for murder, but it has been done. And three million dollars is a lot of dollars. Well, then you don't think Bruno Weedham and the garage man is responsible? Well, we can't rule him out for the minute, but I doubt it. You see, he's one of those little things that you spoke of that just doesn't quite add up. Well, it couldn't be Jordan. He wouldn't gain anything by my death. He'd lose. We'll keep him on the list, though, for the time being. And that detective, O'Brien? I'm not forgetting about him, either. Now, there's just one other thing. That loan contract you made with Jordan, where is it? Oh, in a steel filing cabinet in my bedroom closet. Do you mind if we take a look at it? Not at all. Let's go. Good. I don't get it. It's not here. I'm not surprised. Now, listen. Everything that has happened to you, or nearly happened, has been the result of someone who had a very intimate knowledge of your movements. Where you were going, when you were going, and how, right? I suppose so. Now, whoever got that information and used it is either someone you trust or someone who has access to your telephone conversations. You mean tapped? Telephones have been tapped for a lot less than $3 million. So what do we do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to set a trap, and you're going to be the bait. Oh, you wouldn't by any chance be calling me a hunk of cheese. <laughs> no, it's very simple. Somebody wants to kill you. We don't know who and we don't know why. Now, how about your uncle's old house on Corliss Island? Yeah, that's an out-of-the-way place. A perfect spot for a murder. Yes, it is. And I want you to tell everyone concerned, at least everyone I have on my list of suspects, that you're going over to Corliss Island tomorrow night and you're going to spend the night in the old house there. And for what reason? Oh, any reason will do. Tell them that you intend to sell the place and that you're going over there to make an inventory. Yeah. And make it clear that you're going alone. And then what happens? 
Then our murderer walks into the trap. And murders me. Swell. I'll be there, but that's the part we don't tell anybody. That's the part you don't mention to anyone. Not even to the girl you love, okay? Okay. You, uh, you haven't got a car I could rent for tomorrow night, have you? I'd need it for about 24 hours. Something wrong with your car again, Mr. Corliss? No, no, it's just in the paint shop. But I've got to make a trip out to my grandfather's old place on Corliss Island tomorrow night. I have to make an inventory. I'm going to sell the place, and I need a car to drive down to the dock. I got no cars to rent. Well, I'll be back by noon the day after tomorrow. I got no cars to rent. All right, Bruno. You don't have to get sore. Look, any time anybody accuses me of leaving wheel lugs loose around a car, I get sore, and I stay sore. The place is no good to anyone. It's eating its head off in taxes. But I can't sell it without a complete inventory. Under the circumstances, my advice to you is to take somebody along with you to act as a guard. I'm not exactly an invalid, Mr. Jordan. Then you must be careful, my dear boy. Be very careful. Oh, I'm not worried. I'm also not advertising the fact that I'm going out there alone. Oh, excellent, my dear boy, excellent. I still don't think you should go out to that place after everything that's happened. Well, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen this time. You can take my word for it. Ha. Huh. What do you mean, ha? Huh? Just ha, huh, that's all. Is there a phone still connected up out there? Well, it was the last time I was out there. Well, maybe I'll phone you later and see if any of the Corliss ancestral ghosts have made off with you. That's a good idea. You know, as a matter of fact, I've always suspected that place was haunted. Suspected? Everybody in the South Shore knows it's haunted. I've got to go. Mother's waiting for me. You, uh, you won't forget the phone. You take care of yourself, Jenny. Why? You won't marry me anyway. Well, a girl has to have something to worry about. Maternal instinct, I suppose. Bye. Bye. Factory head go speaking. <laughs> Andy, are you all right? Well, it's a pretty bad storm. Well, you couldn't have gotten out there much before it started. How are you going to get back? I know, but I wish you'd taken someone else with you. Well, are you sure you're all right? You feel all right? Of course I'm all right, sweet. Now, it was all right the night the gas was turned on, too. I'm not the type to commit suicide. Nothing can happen to me over here. Everything's fine. Now look, honey, what I want... Oh. Oh. That's funny. Braddock at Central. Put me through to Chief Logan. Hello, Logan Braddock. Have you anything big enough to get across the Corliss Island? Right now. Yeah, I had a decoy set up rigged, and the tail I had of my two hottest suspects lost them at the harbor. Yeah, they jumped into a fast boat and got away just ahead of the storm. You've got to get something. I don't care what it is. I'll be down as soon as a siren and a red light could get me there. Now, you're mighty right. This is a case of life and death. Yes, keep ringing. Hello? Oh, Sandy. Yeah, I, I guess I just knocked it out for a minute. Well, I think everything is all right. Listen, Sandy, I don't know whether it was a wind or what, but...
generator. I was cut off. Time up, Pops. All right, snap out of it. You're not hurt. You got my gun? Why don't you go ahead and finish the job? No bullet for you, Buster. We're going down to the dock and you're gonna drown. Sort of accidentally. Come on. Drop it. I said drop it. Captain Braddock. Now get over next to your partner. Are you all right? Yeah, I, I think so. I, Mr. Jordan, I don't get it. On the contrary, my dear boy, you do get it. It's I who don't get it now. All right, boys, start them on their journey. We didn't find the answer to Corliss's question until we searched Lucius Jordan's office and found a copy of the contract. Now, here is where Corliss made his mistake. This narrow little white space in the contract was the gimmick that almost cost Corliss's life. Now, had he taken the precaution to have the contract examined by a good lawyer, the lawyer would have drawn a line from the last word in the top paragraph to the first word of the following paragraph, thereby preventing Jordan from doing just what he did. Using the same typewriter, Jordan filled in an additional clause to the contract giving him full title to one-third of Corliss's estate in the eventuality of his death prior to the fulfillment of the contract. Jordan and his accomplice O'Brien were tried and convicted of attempted murder, and both received life terms. Young Corliss decided to get a job and work until his 30th birthday. And when he made that decision, his girl Sandy made another and I was invited to the wedding, and I went. Now, whenever you're executing any kind of an important legal document, be sure and take a lawyer along with you, and he'll see that there are no blank spaces left open in your contract. If you don't follow this simple precaution, remember that what happened to Andy Corliss could happen to you. I'm closing this case now. Or rather, the courts will. But there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. <laughs>